Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at PyRevit again. Specifically, we're going to look at tab coloring. Now, I want to look at this specifically because I did a video that's covering an add-in that's called Coloring Tabs. And from what I can tell, it looks to be discontinued on Autodesk's website for add-ins. So I can't find it. I'm getting people saying, hey, where did it go? The link doesn't work, this or that. I can't get it to work myself. So uh, this is probably the best alternative, and I think it's the best alternative because it's going to do everything you want it to do, but nothing more, while supplying you with everything else that PyRevit can do. So this is going to be PyRevit, and we're going to look at specifically the tab coloring, which is really cool, really nice. It's going to make your life of working with multiple projects open at once a lot easier. So if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I hope you do, please demolish that like button. really helps me out quite a lot. Okay, getting into it now. We can see I've got my PyRevit tab here, and that's really all we need. I did a previous video that looked at the intro, configuring it, and all, all of that, uh, getting installed. So check that out first if you haven't. Uh, but here we are in tab coloring. So before I click this tab coloring, I want to show you where we can actually edit this because I can turn this on and it's going to do some things. Of course, it's going to colorize these tabs in a certain way. Now, obviously, it's within the panel here called toggles, which is kind of important to note because you'll see these icons to the left of these descriptions change whenever you click on it. In other words, it's a toggle. Like, think of it as an on, off, or yes or no. So where do we configure this? Well, we can come into our settings for PyRevit, and we can go to our UI UX because that's what we're dealing with, the UI, the user interface. And so we can come down here and see, hey, colorize open documents. It's checked or it's not. Uh, obviously, we want to do this. So then, then it's a matter of how we want to do that. And by default, this is more or less what it's set up as. And uh, at this point, it's it's purely customization. You know, what do you what colors do you want to use? And how do you want them oriented? Do you want bars or borders or whatnot? And so let's first look at this project tab style. Well, I got this these different top bars that range from light to heavier. And we can see that as I change this, I can see that I have bars on top and they're associated with these colors down here that we'll get to in a second. Um, but we can also use borders of different, <laughs> different lengths, uh, different lengths, different thicknesses. Uh, but then we have a background fill, which is kind of interesting. Now, if you're a super, you want to see a lot of colors, great, do this. At this point, it's a matter of what's going to be easier to read. You know, depending on the color, it's going to be easy to read this. Other colors may not be as easy. Uh, I'm just going to land probably somewhere in the border medium so I can clearly see what color it is, uh, but it's not impacting the text, just the readability of the text at all. That's fine. And then family tabs. So you, if you're like me at all, you are editing families quite often, you know, often enough to where you do open them and you might have a couple open. Uh, and so we want to see the difference between a project and a family we want to know what that is. Now we can set them both to be the same border medium. We they all so they all look the same. Of course, they will inherit different colors, uh, but that's not so much what I want to do because I want to distinguish the difference between a project and a family. You'll see it's picking up these colors if we come down here. The order it's going to be first this orange and then this really dark looking blue, then a very light blue, and then finally this brick red or brown. And so the families will inherit this color scheme which is fine, but we want to be able to note the difference between a project and a family. So I'm thinking either we do a background fill or we do like this top bar. I like the top bar medium because it's it in a way it's like a smaller version of the complete border, which tells me, oh, this family is a family. This is a family and it's going into a project. It's going from a smaller to larger kind of thing. So again, you can do this any way that you want to. It doesn't necessarily matter. So then we can set... Uh, the actual order of all these colors. And I hope you don't have this many different projects and families open at once. If you do, I feel sorry for your PC, but that's okay. <laughs> this, get, this is the number that we have to work with at this point. So we can actually double click this and change the color ourselves. So maybe you want to, you know, do a rainbow, whatever it might be. Uh, or if there are specific colors that you want to start with or continue with and, you know, it's really more of what's uh, best for you. And so this might be a good start as to the number of colors that I expect to see. And you can get an idea of the preview here. See, this yellow may not be a good yellow. We might want to do something a bit darker. Obviously, that's a terrible looking yellow, but you get the idea. 
something like this, this will be fine. So the thing to know about this color by order is that obviously it's going to basically the first project you have open is going to be red. The first project, the next project you have open will be orange. And in this case, if you open a family on top of those two projects, it will be yellow. And then the next thing you open, whether it's a project or a family will be green. So it'll take up this whole order. So uh, the also the thing to note is that this will be the maximum number of colors that will be able to be applied to a project or family. And in this case, if you have more than three, six, nine, ten different projects or families open, they will not inherit any colors. It's not going to like continue the cycle. Uh, that's apparently the maximum number, which I'm not sure why, but it is. Uh, I, you know, we can always add them and reduce them, but just know that if we add more or decrease the number, then that will be the max. So I'm, I'm more on the fence that I don't want as many because it, it just gets a little overwhelming. And if I have, if I start to see tabs that don't have colors or something like that, then I know, okay, it might be time to start looking to close some things here. And so we'll leave it at that. So that we've got a nice few colors here. And so that is by order. Obviously, if I click reset, that's going to reset to the default, which I am not interested in doing at all. And then we will save the settings and then look at this. This is fantastic. Okay. So what we're seeing here is my first, uh, the first project I have to open is red. And that just happens to be the one that I opened first. <laughs> and then the second one is red or it's also orange. So cool. That's great. And you'll notice here when we look at the toggles that the tab coloring icon is basically it's filled, which means it's on or doing something, you know, that kind of a thing. So if I click this, it turns off and it's nothing actually happened, but let me actually click it again and I'll show you, get an idea here. When I click it again, there, it looks, it's, it's different. It's orange. This is telling me that it's clearly on and it's doing its job, which is really cool. So that's, that's good to see. Basically we're done at this point. So I'll, what I'm going to do is come over to this and maybe just, we open this bathtub family. And as soon as I open this up, I'm expecting to see, yes, a yellow, look at that. That's telling me everything I need to know. I mean that this tells me I have in this case, two projects open because I've decided that projects are borders. And then I have one family open because it happens to be yellow. And if you want to go to the extents of saying, okay, I want this to be a specific color. We can go back to our filters and I need to just edit that filter, obviously. So let's go over. If we look at this, the name of this project, it's sample house. And so let's come over to PyRevit, my settings. And now we can take a look at the specifically by filter. So what is by filter? Well, uh, this is going to display exactly the color you decide here. If I hit a plus, I could see I want to maybe this is a, a, a separate color completely of this magenta from the rest. And I want this to be specifically by filter. And this filter is something that I can specify. And so it's note that it's looking at the title of the tabs, basically the view name to a degree. Um, in this case, it, if it's a sheet, it's we'll pull up the sheet number and then the name, and then otherwise it's the view name, whatever. So that kind of a thing. And so whenever I click this, I could see just the default is project one. Well, I, I don't see anything in my tabs and nor do I have a views name project one. So I don't want that. Well, so let's see, for example, if I put this to 3d, if I change this to three, this basically saying, if this works correctly, and we'll test it in a second that any view or any tab title with 3d in it is going to receive this color basically overriding everything else we have above and we might want to do this because it's either specifically a 3d view or maybe it's a 2d view maybe we want to look at just floor plans that are like called out to be that particular color i don't know you can decide how you want to do it um, but as soon as i save this we can see how, how what happens in this this is perfect. So basically what we're looking at is we have this project, this first project open, it's red and then the next project is orange. And then my family is yellow, but we have these random overrides of this magenta border. And that is because it is 3d. It's looking for that text in these tabs. In this case, it's 3d. And in this case, also, it doesn't seem to care about the name of the project because if I hover over this, I can see, okay, that's it's basically called the, it's called sample house dash materials 22. Okay. So like, and then the view name, whatever. So if I come back over here and this is, I, this is the way I wish it worked that we could basically have it colored per project. I can change this to, let's just say sample because clearly I have, I know the name of the project is sample house, whatever. And I can hit 
save these settings and it all goes back. Unfortunately, it's not looking at that at all. In, it's looking at specifically this text that's in the tab. So you can make it colorized per project specifically if you have the name of the project in all your views or something, which I think would be a pain to do, nor have I heard of anyone doing that. So that's just something to be aware of. It's only going to work on per views because I really wish it worked per project uh, specifically because I would want to specify the color for specific projects. I work in Outlook a lot. I categorize all my emails by colors that are associated to certain projects. So I would love to be able to do that. Uh, we're not too far from being able to do that, but uh, it's more or less uh, knowing what you have open. You know, first you want to open this particular project. Well, just know that it's red. Well, I could also come in here and say, oh, well, I opened this particular project and this one happens to be uh, this dark green color in Outlook. So, okay, I can change that and it's easy enough to do that. So really easy stuff. Again, I can always toggle this on and off if I don't want to see it or if I do that type of thing. And once you do it once, it will start reporting that in real time that you can see the, the yellow tab, the yellow color there. So really cool. That will do it for tab coloring. It's, it's quite simple. The one last thing I will say that we could look at is this, this output window, uh, which is a complete CSS style sheet. And we can locate this here. We can edit this, that type of thing. We can add our own. That is uh, for a separate video that's a lot more advanced. So I would stick with the tab coloring tab up here. Really simple, easy to use, and it's going to give you exactly what you want when it comes to all of these tab colors. So again, that will do it for this video. If you happen to learn something, tab coloring, really cool. I'm going to use it all the time because it's so simple to use and I can get an idea of how many projects and what projects I might have open. So let me know if you learn something or just end up liking the video by demolishing that like button. Helps me out quite a lot. All right. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.